the DSM has been a kind of a necessary evil throughout my professional life. It's a good guideline for categorizing people, but the evil, if you will, maybe a little bit of a overdriving word, but basically is to look at people in terms of problems. And that's correct from a medical-based, let's heal the problem, let's fix the problem. The problem is that doesn't, isn't really what helps people get better. People get better by focusing on their strengths, by focusing on what they envision a better version of, of themselves would be like, and then helping them work with actualizing that. Basically, in any context, it's about having a person trust you, beginning to talk their language, find out what's important to them. That, we've found, is essential that you include a spiritual dimension of life as well as physical, mental, emotional. You've got to include a spiritual dimension because that's important to people. It's important to people who consider themselves atheists who have no spirituality. That's an important aspect of who they are and how they reckon with what's going on with them. They may give it a different name, but these qualities of our unfinished business, our ragged edges, are there in all of us. Under stress, they become more prominent. In times of what were called spiritual awakenings, we often have to face those demons. That's, I mean that metaphorically, <laughs> but they may be experienced by a person as really a, a kind of a demonic presence. And it can be very helpful to that person if they happen to be in that zone of thinking and very caught up in that to say, well, have you considered that maybe you are wrestling with an angel rather than hearing the voices of demons? You know, get, kind of get into their language system, get into their belief system and help them see maybe there's a different way of looking at that.